This is rather a nice little one, and uh, if I change the focal point on it, you can see how it's sitting there. And if I change the lighting on it, you'll get a different impression of what you're looking at. So here, you can see the inner area here, which is like raised, and there's kind of splat up here. It's rather nice. measure this so this is again a sort of 400 micron one approximately uh, something like that it's at an angle I mean, it could be smaller and it's just splattered on the surface. Change the light again. Now I'll change the polarization here. Hopefully, it won't jog it. So here is an example in my mind of an exotic vacuum object uh, that didn't quite hit the surface of the inside of the supernova reactor head on. Uh, you can see as I go up and down through the focusing here um, that it does appear this is on the um, polarized, fully polarized uh, light. But th there is a kind of hexagonal feature here. But uh, it's kind of stretched out uh, towards its bottom end. And uh, the curious thing here is that uh, under this view, you can see this kind of almost like a line that's coming in here at the top. And then it starts to spiral in. And then at this point, it just splays out. Now, <laughs> could it be that the matter at this point was literally in a point, And as it came through to here, it kind of just all came out of containment, as it were. I don't know. Um, it does look like it's splatted on the surface here. Now, it does give you a very, very different impression when we turn the polarization off. So at the moment, with this polarization fully on, uh, we can see through the glassiness to the underlying substrate. So uh, that would imply, therefore, that this area here may be predominantly the surface of the aluminium onto what the glassy substance is placed. Um, these kind of raised areas here are these um, aluminium or aluminium oxide that became into a, a an amorphous state and, and was shifted 
uh, and are these the kind of raised areas that we see on our Evo 1 and on the Matsumoto photos that he took in 1992 in his cold fusion uh, experiments with light water and nickel on the reverse of his nickel plates. I don't know. Uh, this is what we are seeing here. Um, but yeah, it's very curious as you see it. I'm going to just uh, change the lighting to another uh, one of these base lights here and it just gives you a li little difference uh, in the shadowing there. Again, this lining uh, that you see here uh, is because of the tool bit that did the CNC machining to produce the uh, inside uh, hemisphere of this part of the clamshell. So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it on this uh, bottom light. So at the moment I've just got this one uh, quadrant lit, which is two LEDs. I'm going to try without moving it. Let's see if I can do this. Um, the turning off the... Uh, you can see if I show you here, it gets a very different impression. And on this impression, you, you don't see this bit raised up. You almost see like it's taken, gouged out a line here as, as it's come in, if that's what it's done. So if I turn that over there, and then, then we look at this, it kind of, you can almost see the glassiness there, but that's not the best way to look at it. Let's see what here. Uh, oop. There we go. So in this view, uh, you can kind of see the specular edge around here. And uh, if you look closely, uh, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's, you can see the actual eight lights of the ring light reflected in the surface of whatever that glassy material is. You can't really see the channel so much here like this. Now, in this view, it almost looks like this is a glassy swizzle, like a, like a spiral coming in. And we're actually seeing the shadow cast over here. It's quite interesting. And there, it really does now, with that lighting, look like we have a glassy deposit here. And this little fragment over here and there's just some here where it's kind of like maybe it's splatted down and as it's cooled it's fractured here and shifted in yeah it really does like this it looks like a hair of glass going out there I mean, did it come in from here at a slight angle and go splat and then there was some kickback that produced that little spiral? Who knows? Yeah, you can, now you can see the shadows over there. So this is actually really quite prone from the surface here. Yeah, so if I do the other lights, yeah, you don't see the shadow when you do that. Very interesting. A little glassy splat on the surface. Interesting here, I've actually only got um, two lights on here and we see two lights here and two lights here now in case that that might be two lumps or it might be a lump and you're looking at the internal reflection of whatever that glassy substance is I'm 
and hold it there and then just change to add the polarization on and it's increasing polarization there some glassy blobs in various areas. This structure is on one of the edges of the vent holes and it's interesting because we see again this kind of bubble shapes um, which we saw on the plates from Amaza. Very similar to the kind of structures that were on plates from Matsumoto. Whether it's clear there, I can dial that down a bit, but there's almost like Mandela patterns around the central kind of spot here. There's kind of central there, here, here. Now I will change the polarization on this and see what it yields. It's quite dark. I think what's interesting here 
I switch back to the give it a little bit more specular. Is that here we have one of these uh, impact zones that spans not only the CNC bit that comes this way, but we've had a hole drilled here and then uh, an edge finishing going around here. So I think uh, if I look at that, this is a, this actually from here to here is a mitre. So this is going straight down at, at a, mm, potentially mostly 90 degrees from here. And you can see that uh, we have the sort of glassiness going on here and it's kind of splatted on the corner on the mitre edge to see with that level of brightness. Anyway, there we go. This is quite interesting. Uh, we have some sort of fibrous bit that comes down here, hits here, and when it hits the aluminium, it kind of basically goes to black and ends up as a black blob. Uh, so that's interesting, but there's also this one here, which just looks like a a splat, which is splatted on splat. And so you could imagine something that was a load of bubbles of something, and uh, just before it hit the surface, it all came back into being bubbles of something, and deposited this lump, and it's really quite large. <laughs> um... It's, a, it's like a stack of American pancakes, but only made of glass. Absolutely fascinating. D different light on it. Look at that. This is with the polarizing filter on. And it almost looks like you've kind of got a star here. I don't know. Very beautiful. As we've seen in other systems, you've kind of got a spiral going on with this piece that comes in here. We're going to turn the brightness down.
Now my experience would tell me, and uh, Matsumoto's, and that of Yul Brown, and that of Amaza, that this area around here would be rich in carbon, and hence the blacker colour. This is more the aluminium, and the denser material here being the silicon in the centre. Uh, so that is what I would suggest it is. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what it actually is when it comes to, if possible, doing some EDS analysis. So here is one of the areas that's mottled and uh, we've got uh, two spots here and I would suggest that this would be carbon, uh, dense carbon in here, and uh, this would be silicon rich. Uh, and uh, there's maybe a soliton that would have been there, who knows? Uh, much more investigation needed. It's a nice uh, two splat here. glassy that's with all of the uh, lights on and uh, I don't know if you can see but down here you've got all eight lights very clearly showing in that bubble bit. I'm going to change the polarization. Totally flattens that out. Here we see some more of what Matsumoto might describe as colourful pits. This one's very red, so are we seeing some iron oxides in there? Maybe. Where's the iron coming from? Given that it's aluminium, is it two aluminium 27s becoming iron 54? Kind of George Oshawa reaction. Let's 
So I'm going to put some specularity in there. Wow, this is a very glassy block, isn't it? <laughs> 